Right, okay, we're back. So, later on I'm gonna just set up a conversation on our Teams platform where I want us to discuss the implications of the coronavirus on our policies and procedures. Okay, so if we just take it back then to legislation and law, so we've had the Coronavirus Act that's been passed in Parliament now, um, and within the Coronavirus Act, you know, huge piece of legislation and law here, and it sets out um, all sorts for the lockdown for the country, for the health sector, for public sector, for everything, but it also sets out around the closure of schools <clears throat> and the implications that has. So there's also been the school closure guidance, that's been created by the Department of Education and our government, and that schools have then implemented that into various policy. Now, you may or may not be aware of had sight of um, the various policies in relation to school closure and the coronavirus pandemic that's affecting all of us, but it involves some things such as home learning and um, vulnerable learners, free school meals and how they're accessed and social media and contacting students and online learning platforms. So later on, I'm going to set up a quick conversation for us that I would love for you all to feed into when you're able to today, tonight, <coughs> excuse me, around the impact that this uh, coronavirus pandemic has had on our policies and our procedures. Okay, right, moving on then to 5.2. So explain how policies and procedures contribute to quality in education. Now, 5.1 was all about the command verb identify. So it's about just giving some few sentences to identify each policy that you're discussing. Explain, ask for a little bit more information. Okay, so when we're doing um, an explain criteria, we need to think about giving a good number of examples within that uh, response, okay, to that particular criteria. So we've got several for you to look at here. So explain how policies and procedures contribute to quality in education. One is that it provides consistency, okay. Policies are, of course, open to interpretation, but they should be written in such a way that sets out what the working practices should be so that children, so that parents, so that staff, so that teaching and learning experiences are familiar and we know what the expectations are around those. Because when we have consistency, it especially helps children feel safe and secure. It lets us know what our boundaries and our limitations and the expectations are of our roles too. So. Policies and procedures also provide us with the opportunity to regularly review policies and give us a chance to learn from previous experience. So earlier in our 5.1 video, we discussed how actually things and experiences that happen to schools, incidents and events, allow schools to learn, to review and to implement changes into their policies and to their procedures, working practices. They also ensure that settings are compliant with the law. We know that policies are drawn down from statutory guidance and from legislation and law. So we make sure that when we regularly review our policies, we review the statutory guidance, review the law and legislation, that we are being compliant. And that means that we tick all the right boxes for Ofsted and Department of Education, but also that we do right by the children and the families that we serve. So having policies and procedures, it also means that parents and children understand those expectations. So if we think about, you know, the bullying policy that you might have, it means that we've got a system whereby we can communicate exactly what our expectations are going to be, what our standards are going to be, and how we are going to react and support those particular events. Having policies such as off-site visits and health and safety policies ensures that staff know what to do to keep children safe. It's all very well and good giving us the Health and Safety Act, for example. But as we discussed earlier, reading an act and um, reading legislation and law is um, nigh on possible. So having a clear set of policies and procedures in relation to health and safety lets people know if I do these things, I can keep children safe in my care. And that gives us some reassurance when we're tasked with the very responsible job of caring for children's welfare as well as their education. Policies mean that governors and senior staff have carefully considered how something must be handled and set it out accordingly. Now, what we know is best practice is when um, policymakers, when school governors, when senior leadership teams actually offer 
consultation period or consult with children, with families, with parents, carers and with staff who are going to be carrying out these working practices, who are going to be carrying out the procedures and they get that feedback and bring that into the review and the amendment of any policy. Okay, so little slide here to just give you some guidance on what to include in an explained criteria. So looking at the examples, okay, and please, 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 within this criteria, reference. So reference policies and procedures that you are looking at. Really capture that additional reading and research that you're doing around legislation, around statutory guidance and around policy. OK, right. Due to technical issues, we are going to leave it there at 5.2 and I will pick up 4.1 with you next week. So next week we're going to be looking at legislation, but we're also going to just quickly recap on policy and procedure around health and safety. So that's what we're going to be looking at the 4.1 criteria. Okay, so that's specifically health and safety, um, legislation and policy and procedure. We're going to touch base on that next week. So for this week, just get researching around those policies and procedures that you're using at your school, be identifying, use the 5.1 worksheet that's available for your Moodle and start copying and pasting the criteria and the assignment brief onto a Word document and you can start working through. Go as far for now as um, 5.2. I wouldn't suggest going any further at this stage unless you feel um, particularly ambitious and you're all more than capable of working through the PowerPoint yourselves. Um, but for now, let's leave it there. I'll see you later on Teams for those that are available for a quick discussion. Please don't feel any pressure for anybody to be communicating on that in real time. It's fine for you to come back to that discussion at a point that works for you. Take care, stay safe, see you soon, bye.